Let's take a look at Scarlett Johansson and see if any facial features have been tweaked over the years. We will discuss the cost of some of these potential procedures at the end. In 1998, at the age of 14, you can see that Scarlett has an M-shaped hairline. The head and tail of the brow are on the same horizontal plane. The lateral canthus of her eye rests higher than the medial canthus, which is very normal, youthful feature. She has smooth lower lid to cheek transition. She has a slight tip bulbosity to her nasal tip and she has this heart shaped face she's only 14 of course she does and um, she has a very well defined cupid's bow a short and also well defined philtrum excellent natural lip volume good upper tooth show and great bone structure in 1999 at the age of 15 you see here that she has natural facial asymmetry as we all do her left side sits higher than the right you can look here at her eyebrow the entire eye socket and the nasal ala, which is the wing of the nose. It sits higher on the left than the right. In 2000, at the age of 16, there are no changes. However, in 2001, at the age of 17, what I'm seeing are some subtle signs of rhinoplasty and potentially an alarplasty. The tip to me looks less bulbous. Even the bridge looks a bit more narrowed and she has a more narrow nasal base. At the age of 17, some might say, oh, she was too young to get a rhinoplasty, but that actually is not uncommon. A lot of people, when they hit a mature stage of, of facial development, which for uh, women tends to be closer to 16, for guys usually more like 17, it's acceptable to get rhinoplasty surgery if it's needed for breathing or someone feels like they're getting ridiculed or they really don't like their nose for cosmetic reasons. It's really not uncommon to get surgery at that age. Of course, you need parental consent. You're not 18 yet, at least in the States. So it would not have been unusual for Scarlett to have gotten a rhinoplasty at that young age of 17. I'm also seeing that she has a depressed scar on the left tail of the eyebrow. I didn't see that prior, so maybe it was um, something to do with acne, maybe it was an injury, but there's something that caused this scar on the left tail of the brow that I see persist throughout the future years. In 2002, at the age of 18, she has a nice big smile with good exposure of the top of her upper teeth, but she does not have any major gum exposure, so it really is the perfect amount of tooth show when she smiles. In 2003, at the age of 19, I'm seeing here that Scarlett has a strong jaw that's balanced well against soft, plump, natural red lips. And she has a very beautiful natural feature in that. A lot of uh, times people are getting filler or different lip surgeries or lip procedures to look closer like her, but you know, some people are just born with it. When you look at her upper lip, it's flat up against her face. When people get filler, it tends to protrude the lip out. And that is one of the biggest differences between the natural look and sort of the filled look. And she has um, a short but a well-defined philtrum that provides really nice balance to the rest of her face. In 2004, at the age of 20, you're seeing here youthful eyelids. There's no hollowing of the upper eyelid area. She has that infrabrow fullness. What people forget, especially in like you know later years, when patients are getting um, upper blepharoplasty and sometimes it's being overdone, they actually get more hollowing of the upper eyelid so they're trying to look more youthful, but it's actually having the opposite effect because you can see what youth looks like here, where you have not too much skin hanging over, but you have that nice uh, pillowy sort of fullness under the eyebrow above the eyelid margin that creates for a very youthful, sort of young, rejuvenated look. She also has this amazing skin that uh, really shows here, and um, she is able to maintain that uh, through the years with, with great skin care. In 2005, at the age of 21, I'm again seeing a strong chin that's balanced well with the mid face and the upper face as well. You can see that her brow bone is actually fairly robust uh, and, and that works for her because of the strong cheeks, because of the strong chin, and even her nose works well with the rest of her face because even though it's not this little tiny dainty thing, it just complements the rest of her face because of the strong bone structure. It just all works together quite nicely. And if you look at just the eye area or just the lip area as far as shape, as far as volume, it it's like 
flawless uh, so that's that's amazing 2006 at the age of 22 i see no changes what i do see here in this image on the right is that the white roll of her vermilion border has nice prominence and that is something that as we age we tend to lose it's that distinction as the red lip becomes um, the cutaneous lip and that really cannot be recreated with surgery or with filler um, people try, they inject the, the vermilion border with filler, but it just never quite has that same natural look. In 2007, at the age of 23, you can see how short her philtrum gets when she smiles. It's quite obvious in this picture. In 2008, at the age of 24, I'm not seeing any additional change. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. In 2009, in 2010, and 2011, I'm not seeing any further change. In 2012, at the age of 28, I'm starting to see that perhaps Scarlett has had the introduction of Botox to the areas that we frequently talk about, the forehead, the glabella, and the crow's feet. It just looks more smoothed out. It looks like when she smiles, I'm not seeing any of those lines laterally to the side of her eyes, as well as the forehead and the area between the eyebrows. So she may have started to get Botox injections every three to four months around this time. In 2013, at the age of 29, was actually when she was pregnant for the first time. I'm not seeing any obvious change there. 2014, age 30, uh, you can see how the dorsal hump has been maintained. So even if she had a rhinoplasty, back in the day, she did not get the bridge of her nose fully filed down. That's, I think, great. You know, a lot of people want to preserve that element of their nose. And there are some people who get the hump taken down and then they regret it. And then they look for procedures to try to bring that hump back, which is very difficult to do, uh, I would say. So if you're going to get the hump removed and shaved down, please make sure that you're fully committed to that process so that you don't regret it later on. You can also see here that the supertarsal show that I sometimes talk about, that area above the eyelid margin, um, is a good place to apply makeup, um, a common place for women to apply makeup. And so having that tarsal show allows for that makeup to be more visible. If you have significant upper eyelid skin laxity, then that skin will cover over that area, not allowing you to show where that makeup sits. In 2015, at the age of 31, I'm seeing some signs of a brow lift here. When I look back at some of her other photos, and then I look at this one in, in 2015, the brows overall just seem more lifted, elevated. Now, could this be a product of, um, of Botox injections? Maybe, but I'm sensing that there could be something surgical here, though, of course, I'm not completely sure. She does have this beautiful neckline that has been maintained over the years, and she's still very youthful here at 31. 2016, at the age of 32, I'm not seeing any further changes. 2017, at the age of 33, what I wanted to highlight here is just the aging process. You can see the lower lid to cheek junction is starting to become a little bit more pronounced, that tear trough area that some people get filled with, with injectables. Other people might get a lower blepharoplasty to try to smooth out that area, but that area is definitely getting deeper in, in Scarlett's lower eyelid. And um, that's just what happens to all of us as we get older. In 2018, at the age of 34, the area around where the buckle fat pads normally sit just looks more hollowed out to me. I just surmise that perhaps she could have gotten a buckle fat removal around this time. Of course, this is all speculation, but it's just, just a thought. Please check out our video on buckle fat removal and what my thoughts are on that. Now, could this have just been weight loss related or perhaps some uh, energy type of treatment such as all therapy or, or face tight, perhaps? Um, but some people after buckle fat removal get this increased hollow. So their face might look a little more sculpted, but they do get this increased hollow right around where the buckle fat pads sit. In 2019, at the age of 35, what I'm seeing here is potentially an introduction of cheek filler. When you look at her medial cheeks right in this area, they look more full relative to the lateral cheek. When you look at her pictures from when she was 
much younger, the lateral element of the cheeks was actually more full. And now it looks like the medial element has a lot more fullness. So that could be a result of some cheek filler. And also it looks to me like she probably had some dental adjustments, maybe some veneers, not uh, a tooth guy. But um, if you look at the photo here compared to 2012, I think you can see there have been some adjustments to the teeth as well. In 2020, at the age of 36, I'm not seeing any further change. 2021, at the age of 37, she's now pregnant around this time again with her second, and I'm not seeing any additional change. 2022, age 38, no obvious changes beyond just potentially some weight fluctuations that may have been linked to her pregnancy. So the total cost of all these procedures is $120,000. Since you like this video on Scarlett Johansson, I know you'll love our video on Shakira. Check that out and I'll see you there.